What's up, everybody? This is Jay, and this is my recap reaction review for The Godfather of Harlem Season 1, Episode 1, by whatever means necessary. It's a new show on the Epics Network. It's really good. It's starring Forrest Whitaker and a lot of great actors. I'm going to break it down. But before I do, if you enjoy my videos with a little bit of humor and you haven't already, please subscribe and bang that bell so you notified of my videos. I'm trying to reach 30K subs. And also hit that like if you recommend this video to others. Let's get into it. What's up, everybody? This is Jay, and this video is about my reaction, review, recap, breakdown, all of the above of the new hit show on Epics, The Godfather of Harlem. That's right. It's starring Forrest Whitaker, and it's about real life people and events that took place starring Bumpy Johnson. Okay, now. Bumpy Ellsworth Johnson, for those who don't know, was a real person. And he was actually started off running numbers and things and during the Prohibition era. And they made a movie about him as well when Lawrence Fishburne played him in the movie Hoodlum, which was also another good movie and hood classic. If you haven't seen it, check it all out. Nevertheless, this show is about when he was an older person, when the movie Hoodlum ended, he ended up, uh, you know, he was a little younger. So now he's older, just getting out of jail. He was in Alcatraz, which was no joke. Now it's actually shut down. And so he's getting out of Alcatraz. He's trying to come back to Harlem and reestablish his foothold and dominance in the area, in the neighborhood. And he has to try to get back his territory and different turfs and money and power from the, the Guineas, the Italians. And so he's having problems doing that. He's been gone, he's older, things changed. You can't teach your old dog new tricks, but you can use a couple old tricks on a young dog. And so that's what he's trying to do. Um, heroin is starting to really take place and uh, really do a lot to the community. Um, he realizes at the end of the episode that his daughter is really strung out worse than the $2 hoe because inflation, she was actually like a 50 cent hoe. And so he was trying to do things. It was kind of a hell of a struggle when you a drug dealer and you sell heroin but at the same time your daughter's addicted to that horse and you're trying to get her hooked unhooked rather um that's crazy but nevertheless um it's an interesting story it shows him dealing with malcolm x they knew each other from when they was younger now he's out and he remembers him as detroit red and now Malcolm X has changed, converted his life to Islam, and he's no longer about that life. And so we're trying to see, you know, how are their relationship going to work out? He also is working in, uh, with Adam Clayton Powell, who was one of the first black congressmen. And so he had a lot of little things that he had to deal with. And so he's trying to reestablish everything as well as let people know that he ain't no joke and a force to play with, but he no longer see eye to eye with everybody in the hood, in the community, if you know what I mean. So he's trying to see what's going on. One of the young fellas in the hood got kneecapped. He goes and talks to the people that's uh, running it. His name was Chin, who was a real person. And they had a mutual respect for one another. But Bumpy Johnson came in and kind of threatened one of his made men soldiers, his capo or whatever. I can't remember the name offhand. Nevertheless, he didn't appreciate that. Now, Chin's daughter had a taste for dark meat. Yeah, she liked black men and Chin didn't like that. And she also liked the music. Um, and making her feel good and shaky, shaky, you know what I mean? And so um, he ended up was looking for her and she ran away with her boyfriend and stole a kilo of that uh, horse. And so now he's looking for him. He's pissed 
they ended up getting caught because Bumpy and his crew ended up asking around, finding out Jasmine Sullivan was in there in a cameo as a singer, and she gave them the heads up on what was going on and why it was the problem that it was because another person came. A lot of people in the hood would come to him instead of the police for their problems and things, just like how the Godfather and the Italian mob was. Well, he was the Godfather of Harlem, and a lot of the black folks would come to him to get some of their problems and things taken care of and handled. And so one of the ladies said, you know, my son got a problem. He is thinking to that white girl. He's like, well, you know, musicians do drugs. He's talking about, no, I'm talking about that white girl, for real, white woman. She the devil. <laughs> and so uh, it turned it out to be Chen's daughter. And so he finds that as an opportunity to, for one, help somebody in the hood, but two, get the leverage he needs so that Chen would give him his turf back. And so he finds the daughter, then they go and make an arrangement. All right, look, I got something for you. I got your daughter, I can help you find her. And so he pretty much, once he does get that, he uses that situation to take care of another situation, which is that Italian made man that was running things in Harlem, he found out that he like black pudding. He liked that chocolate pudding. Yeah. And so what he did with that is he used that. Once he found that information out, he uh, called dude eating some dessert right, right in live action. His little cocktail weenie hanging out and everything. And so he kneecapped him just like he kneecapped the young brother. And once he kneecapped him, he was able to sprinkle a little horse, a little sugar, brown sugar, AKA heroin on him after he slit his throat, gave him a Colombian necktie. And so that's a no-no because if anybody knows about the mob, you can't touch a made man. Um, you know, they, they protected from everything up under the sun. You see what I'm saying? And so he was able to get away with it because Chen didn't want people to know that his daughter was over there getting a taste of chocolate long john villain. And so what he ended up doing is pretending that he had nothing to do with that. And Chen, he pretty much kind of blackmailed him because he used that to get his daughter back. Chen was damn near ready to kill his daughter over that. He was even talking to the priest saying, hey, if God don't smite him, I'm going to kill this, you know what I mean, Negroid. And anyway, ended up working things out. The daughter kind of smoothed things over. And episode one was kind of crazy, interesting. And it just lets you know that this is a good show. Great writing. Something that some shows start off with but are not always able to maintain. So let's hope the Godfather of Harlem is not only able to maintain the great writing for the first season, but many seasons to come. Now, Forrest Whitaker is a legendary actor, and also they have Giancarlo Esposito, who has been in many movies from Do the Right Thing and more. He plays Adam Clayton Powell, and the guy that plays Chin, he's also a very good actor who's been in many, many movies. And also, um, he was just recently in, uh, what was that, Daredevil on Netflix. And so uh, we'll see how it all turns out. Um, we'll see if it maintains the great start that it had. Um, I hope so. It's a good show, and I'm interested to see what else it has to offer. Godfather of Harlem, episode one. Looks like it's pretty good. Another movie that the actor Chin played in that a lot of people will remember him. That's Vincent D'Onofrio. 
He played Private Pile in Full Metal Jacket. So, uh, he was a lot younger then, but, you know, most recently in Daredevil, among other things. Um, check it out. I recommend it. It's on Epics. Epics is now getting into the game of making TV shows. And they started with a couple other shows. This is the first black show. And it's a good one. They picked a good topic, good cast, good crew, good writing. Godfather Harlem, J. Moore Reviews. I give it four buckets of popcorn. Check it out.